Pardon? Do you want to be a missionary? Um, the wolf like a missionary? Yeah. Oh. Here, honey bun. So, was there a fishing lesson? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> is it Joe? Joe, who's a friend of Mr. Boo's. Uh-huh. The Wolf Lake initiative. Yeah. So he was teaching. Okay. Yeah, he did really well. We didn't catch anything in the morning, but this time we we're did better. Oh. <laughs> we did oh. better. They served oh. a very excellent lunch there. Oh. He's coming. Did you see it? It's fun. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Go <laughs> uh, uh. the fish, go the fish. He's coming. I think he's coming. Where do you see the fish? <gasps> yes, he's coming. He's coming to eat it. It doesn't look like a worm, but you can eat it. It doesn't bow because it is not in bow. You can see the picture to it. Oh, look at this too. There's two. There's two. There's two coming out there. Yeah. Let's see if we get that first. He's trying to get it. Oh, someone else is trying to get it. Ah. Ah. Did you get it? Oh boy, it looked like he was nibbling right on there. You see the turtle? Yeah. Uh, Lately, that car just went over. Looks straight down. Oh, there it is. Still wonder where the fish is. No, actually, he got away with it. He liked to go. Yeah, you were very patient, right? Okay, I'm gonna be walking down. My name's Joanne. And your name is? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. <laughs> okay, I know an artist named Jeremiah. He's really good. But I'll bet you're a better fisherman than he is. Okay, I think Michael's supposed to do something inside at about 2 o'clock. I think we've got our presentation. Yeah, that's at least 15 minutes, so. In the next 25 minutes or so, I will take you on a tour of the Wolf Lake watershed and explain why it is important to us and to you. Then I'll talk briefly about our organization and what we are attempting to achieve. Uh, we'll save time at the end for questions. Uh, and at that time, I think most of you are familiar with this uh, contact information anyway. You can uh, jot down our email address to ask questions that may arise later. You are also invited to visit uh, Ollie's website for information uh, not discussed here today. Uh, this slideshow shows the small and the large of Wolf Lake. Uh, there's a close-up of a family of newt swans along a dike. Um, These are a uh, close-up of a family of mute swans. If the swans weren't mute, they would probably speak Chinese, because that's where they're from, China. Uh, the aerial shot shows much of the Illinois and Indiana side of Wolf Lake. The White Tank Farm is Wolf Lake Terminals, which lies in Hammond along the state line. We'll talk about it later. The system of dikes shown here were introduced in the 1950s to transport supplies and manpower to the construction site of the Indiana Toll Road, um, which goes uh, along here. Um, the federal government forgot to remove them when the job was done. Uh, so Wolf Lake is one of the few, if not only late in either state where you can fish the center without a boat. The entire watershed can be seen 
in the next slide. In the background, uh, here with Lake Michigan in the background and the stretch of the Kaimet River in the foreground, Wolf Lake flows into the river through Indian Creek. More clearly shown are other sections of the watershed, Powderhorn Lake and Prairie and George Lake. A watershed by definition is a body of water and all the land that drains into it. Here's a map that shows Indian Creek um, and more clear, more clearly, and also Kaiman Container, um, which is uh, here, the little triangular space there, which we'll talk about later. What happened? 12,000 years ago, shaped the watershed. This includes dune and swell topography. Sometimes uh, they call it uh, uh, ridge and swell. Uh, remnants of which are shown here uh, on this slide. I think that's a 1938. Uh, shot of, of, um, of the upper right corner of the 1938 aerial is Powderhorn, uh, Lake and Prairie. Uh, the um, topography accounts for the, the highly biodiverse plant and wildlife that exists at Powderhorn Lake uh, and Prairie today. Lake Succession describes what hap what could have happened to Wolf Lake. But man intervened to return Wolf Lake from a wetland back to a lake and extended George Lake. Man hastened the de demise of Barry, uh, also Deer, also called Deer Lake, and Hyde Lake. Uh, Barry Lake. Why is it? Was it called Barry Lake? Anyone know? How's it spelled? B e r r y. I used to know. <laughs> Barry okay. over there. Because so. one of the, the initial uh, founding residents. Uh, set up shop along uh, where Kaimet River flows into Lake Michigan. And he had uh, kind of a uh, lodging and probably a general store. And uh, it was, uh, and how he made a, a living was transporting uh, wagons across the Kaimet River uh, safely. And what he would do, and this is from, um, the book on kind of region by uh, his name Sheen. in the 50s, I think, published in the 1950s. Um, Is that by Paul Moore? Paul Moore. Yeah. And, um, so and he, when, when was this guy uh, doing this? Um, I can't remember the exact date, but he was uh, one of the originals that came along. And one, one of the secrets to this mm -hmm. was that it was a sandbar that extended out, but it, you would have to go up almost out to Lake Michigan and then kind of swing back to, for the other side of, of the river. And uh, folks that didn't want to pay this guy money to do it would try to do it themselves and they would end up uh, losing their, their wagon because they were, they were afraid of going out to Lake Michigan. Uh, but the sandbar extended around that far. But very late in Chicago. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the, I don't know where this guy ended up living, but somehow um, uh, that was the, the name of for the lake. It's named after this guy. And he probably owned land uh, in, uh, throughout the region. I don't know. You can go back a couple. You can show where it's at. Go back to your good area slide a couple more. 
one more maybe. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. It's yeah. about right, about over right there, there. Right. right over there. Yeah. That's a good map. I'd like to get a slide of that. So you yeah. Know, you can email me a couple of these. These are good aerial slides. Yeah. Yeah. These are these, are, and I can't remember. Oh, I know. These were provided by U.S. Forest Service. I think. Wow. Okay. Back in about 2000. That's a good shot. Go up this. Yeah. That. I love those aerial. It's got the dunes. Yeah. So let's uh, tour the. Um, well, here's the series of lakes. Mm -hmm. Lake George, Berry Lake, Wolf Lake, and Hyde Lake. And all we have left of Hyde Lake is the Hyde Lake wetlands, of 20 acre. Uh, but what I would like to do is take you on a tour of, of the Wolf Lake watershed and uh, in counter clockwise uh, fashion. And actually, uh, Joanne, you gave this talk once, uh, probably back in 2005, with your students. You took them on a bus tour, remember, of Wolf Lake. And I, and I had a script prepared for you. Thank you, yes. Yeah, and so we're kind of going to do that same trip. Uh, but this is, uh, Wolf Lake Memorial Park, and it's, it was probably in, taken in the 30s or 40s because you can see the uh, racetrack where both autos and boats uh, race. This is in here. There is, did you grow up in Whiting? So I was a little bit close to where he lived. Here. That Forsyth Park is that where that back this end is, of the track is? This Forsyth is Park. No, Forsyth Park is is up here. But this is a strawberry island back here, behind it. Oh, okay, that's where it was, yes. And, and um, so uh, Boy Scout Island should be uh, right around here, whatever's left of today. But this was, this was taken, um, I think, in the 30s or, or 40s. And, so that's looking south. And, that, and that's George that Lake is looking the south, I think. George Lake's on the left. George Lake is over here. I think, yeah. And then this is the point, well, mm -hmm. this is a pretty old photograph, it's not quite like that. Today, but it's hard to see, it looks like, it looks like the, the track is, has water inside and, and Yeah, and, and I think the boats went inside and the cars went around. Not the really? same type of cars, but it was set up so they could have both boat and road car races. So I, and I think I read this somewhere, and I, you know, and I think I've jotted it down. It might be even in my book. I don't know. But so just, um, just beyond it is uh, is Strawberry Island. Yeah, I think Strawberry Island is this right here, the south of it. I think that's how it. You know, I think that's it wouldn't go the other way. I think this is how it, how it went. So it's really facing south. Uh, but anyway, so if we start out with, now today, instead of the racetrack, we have the pavilion, concert pavilion, and the waiting pool, uh, uh, right where we fished today, this morning. And, um, Probably 2004, 2003, they treated uh, uh, at least the Indiana side of Wolf Lake uh, with Eurasian, uh, treated for Eurasian milfoil. Um, and, and we haven't gotten rid of Eurasian milfoil, it's still coming, it comes back. Uh, it comes in on boats, boats bring it from lake to lake. What is it? Pardon? What is it? Eurasian, Eurasian milk oil is uh, one of the uh, long-growing, uh, well, what would you describe it's it? It's an emergent water plant. It's probably one of the ones that really chokes and clogs the water. It's small, but it's not coming up high like the bull rush. Or the and, if you, it, and oftentimes, it, uh, Twisted voters water. would complain because it gets caught up in the, uh, uh, the blade, 
That's what would be half of the stuff that sort of had the surface of the water a little below. You can see it right above and off of Forsyth Park and all those areas there. That would probably be yeah, it's pretty well throughout the lane. And um, maybe 10, 10 years ago, maybe less, uh, a father and his son were out fishing <coughs> in a boat and he went in to cool off to the middle of July. And, and, conversation, go ahead and, and so his 12 year old son was left. And this is uh, right off of, uh, I think it just happened fairly close to Scout Island, right off the shoreline. Um, and so they found him a couple days later. Uh, but what happened to him, he was caught up in, in the raisin milk oil. And instead of relaxing and and uh, so he could un, un, uh, so he remove the plant. Uh, he bought it and it tightened up on it. And he, if you panic, that's what happened. And you can't get out of it. It's when like the old Chinese. When did this happen? The Chinese. When did this happen? About 10 years ago. So uh, around 2003, I think, because that's when Hammond decided to, um, to treat it after this person died. But there were earlier deaths, I think. That, that's a fairly common way of drowning around, around in just not Wolf Lake, but other lakes as well. But so Eurasian oak oil was treated in it. And if you don't treat it a little bit every year in certain select places, then it comes back in a big way. And then you have to spend 300,000, 400,000 to, to treat it again. Um, but they also made the shoreline improvements uh, along um, the, the North Channel uh, and uh, other uh, points of uh, uh, Wolf Lake, uh, the northern areas. Um, and then um, over the years they've extended the, the bike trail which now is, is, I think, fairly attractive. And there's a, a few spaces left because it, it, back in the 1990s, we were talking about coming up with a, a bike trail that would circumvent Wolf Lake. And we're almost there, we're just on the southern portion. And I think it's, the, they're, I don't know if they have money for it now or not, but it would be probably uh, it might even replace 136th Street. It may reduce the road to a bike path. That's 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 been the talk. 100 Boy Scout Road. 100 Boy Scout Road. Yeah. So um, that'd be great. I think it would be great, and it'd be great for you. It's so dangerous right now. It's always just, been dangerous. I just I, I just came out that way, and there was a guy on his bike, and you know. <laughs> There were people who were trying to you know, I, get around them. Yeah, and uh, and there's been quite a few accidents along their uh, car and bike. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. Some some people I, drive through there awfully fast. Yeah. I don't I don't even try that. Anymore. Yeah. I just don't go there. Much. Yeah. Well, and you know that, John. That's yeah. pretty. I'm, I'm over pretty, the years, it's been pretty critical. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, instead of going south, let's go north. This is Forsyth Park, Argyll, Cargill, I mean, uh, plants there. Um, used to be, it used to be called the Maisel, right? Yeah, the Maisel Channel. It still is. A lot of people still call it the Maisel Channel. Uh, this is just kind of background information on Forsyth Park. This is one of my favorite uh, photos. And what does it show? It's a great one for slag. If you don't know what slag is, this is this shows it. It's kind of like a miniature shoreline of Maine, <laughs> where it just it looks like all rock, but that's all slag. And I don't think this exists anymore because I think when they restored the shoreline, they took where was they that? Took this out. This is on a Maisel Channel. And, um, and that, so and that was done in 2000, um, 2005, 
to 2007, maybe, when they restored the shoreline? That's not, that's flag out crap and stuff, we got to have the K channel too and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and that, but this, isn't this, this is a classical, I, I just I, love that. Part. I always, uh, so, so, well, I, they got them, got them iron ore, ore from the Masabi Range in Minnesota, and so, so that's our, our, our little piece, that's our little piece of the Masabi Range. Masabi, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, John. <laughs> so, now we're in Illinois, across the state line. This shot, aerials, what I say, about 2004, 2003, something like that. And this is long before they put in the, the bike trail along here. Um, and uh, it, it looks like they're, what, you have more open water now? Because this looks like it's, yeah. it's a pretty uh, kind of heavy marsh, you said. Uh, but it's pretty much opened up a lot more today. Oh, you can see the, the you get, when, when the, you, can, you can kind of see uh, almost uh, old beach ridges at, uh, at Edgar's Grill. Uh, her, oh. her, her, kind, kind of like where the trees are a little taller yeah. and stuff like that. That's where the uh, old, old, old trees were on the higher ground, yeah? And the, these are like, sandy ridges. Now, we got a, they got a, drain, we got a drainage problem at Wolf Lake Grill. And uh, uh, I, I, I've been talking to the people in the board to do but I don't know if they have any money. No. Uh, they're doing some kind of, the, 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 this marsh, and, and it's, it, it, there's a lot of, well, higher than it usually is, and uh, because of the slag pole and the yeah. Nike site, yeah. that blocks it this, this uh, one time. Because you can see the uh, racetrack where both autos and boats uh, race. This is here. Area. Did you grow up in Whiting? So I was a little bit close to where he lived. Yeah. That Forsyth Park, is that where that the back this end is, of the track is? This Forsyth is Park. No, Forsyth Park is is up here, but this is a strawberry island back here behind it. Oh, okay, that's where it was, yes. And, and um, so uh, Boy Scout Island should be uh, right around here, whatever's left of today. But this was, this was taken, um, I think, in the 30s or, or 40s. And so that's looking south. And that, and that's George that Lake is looking the south, I think. George Lake's on the left. George Lake is over here. I think, yeah. And then this is the point. Well, mm -hmm. this is a pretty old photograph. It's not quite like that today. It's, but it's hard to see. It looks like it looks like the the track is is, is water inside. And, and yeah, and, and I think the boats went inside and the cars went around. Not the really? same type of cars, but it was set up so they could have both boat and road car races. So I, and I think I read this somewhere, and I, you know, I, I think I jotted it down. It might be even in my book. I don't know. But so just, um, just beyond it is uh, is Strawberry Island. Yeah, I think Strawberry Island is this right here, the south of it. I think that's how it. You know, I think that's it wouldn't go the other way. I think this is how it, how it went. So it's really facing south. Uh, but anyway, so if we start out with, now today, instead of the racetrack, we have the pavilion, concert pavilion, and the waiting pool, uh, uh, right where we fished today, this morning. And, um, 2004, 2003, they treated uh, uh, at least the Indiana side of Wolf Lake uh, with uh, treated for Eurasian milk oil. Um, and, and we haven't gotten rid of Eurasian milk oil. It's still coming. It comes back. Uh, it comes in on boats. Boats bring it from lake to lake. What is it? Pardon? What is it? Eurasian, Eurasian milk oil is uh, one of the uh, long-growing, uh, well, what would you describe it's it? It's an emergent water plant. It's probably one of the ones that really chokes and clogs the water. It's small, but 
it's not coming up high like the bull rush. Or the and if you it, and oftentimes it uh, twisted voters water. would complain because it gets caught up in the uh, uh, the blade. That's what would be half of the stuff that sort of had the surface of the water a little below. You can see it right above and off of Forsyth Park and all those areas there. That would probably be yeah, it's pretty well throughout the lake. And um, maybe 10, 10 years ago, maybe less, uh, a father and his son were out fishing <coughs> in a boat. And he went in to cool off in the middle of July. And this is uh, right off of... Uh, I think it just happened fairly close to Scout Island, right off the shoreline. Um, and so they found him a couple days later. Uh, but what happened to him, he was caught up in, in the raisin milk oil. And instead of relaxing, and, and uh, so he could un, un, uh, so he had removed the plant, uh, he bought it. And it tightened up on it. And you, if you panic, that's what happens. And you can't get out of it. It's like the old Chinese. When did this happen? The Chinese. When did this happen? About 10 years ago. So uh, around 2003, I think, because that's when Hammond decided to, um, to treat it after this person died. But there were earlier deaths, I think. That, that's a fairly common way of drowning around. around and just not wolf like other lakes as well. But so Eurasian milk oil was treated in it, and if you don't treat it a little bit every year in certain select places, then it comes back in a big way, and then you have to spend 300,000, 400,000 to, to treat it again. Um, but they also made the shoreline improvements uh, along um, the, the North Channel. Uh, and uh, other uh, points of uh, uh, Wolf Lake, uh, the northern areas. Um, and then uh, over the years, they've extended the, the bike trail, which now is, is, I think, fairly attractive. And there's a, a few spaces left because it, it, Back in the 1990s, we were talking about coming up with a, a bike trail that would circumvent Wolf Lake. And we're almost there, we're just on the southern portion. And I think it's, they, they're, I don't know if they have money for it now or not, but it would be probably, uh, it might even replace 136th Street. <coughs> they may reduce the road to a bike path. That's, that's, that's been the talk. Boy Scout Road? 100 Boy Scout Road, yeah. So, um, oh, that'd be great. I think it would be great. And it'd be great for you. It's so dangerous right now. It's always just, been dangerous. I just I, I just came out that way, and there was a guy on his bike, and, you know, there were people who were trying to I, get around him. Yeah, and, uh, and there's been quite a few accidents along their uh, car and bike. Yeah, yeah. Some some people I, drive through there all too fast. Yeah, I don't I don't even try that. Anymore. Yeah, I just don't go there. Yeah, well, and you know that, John. That's yeah. pretty. I'm, I'm over pretty, the years, it's been pretty critical. Yeah. So anyway, instead of going south, let's go north. This is Forsyth Park, Argyll, Cargill, I mean, uh, plants there. Um, it used to be called the Maisel, right? Yeah, the Channel. It still is. A lot of people still call it the Maisel Channel. Um, this is just kind of background information on Forsyth Park. This is one of my favorite uh, photos. And what does it show? It's a great one for slag. If you don't know what slag is, this, is, this shows it. It's kind of like a miniature shoreline of Maine, <laughs> where it just looks a lot, it looks like all rock, but that's all slag. And I don't think this exists anymore, because I think when they restored the shoreline, they took where was they that? Took, took this out. This is on a Maisel Channel. 
and um, and that, so and that was done in 2000. Um, 2005 to 2007, maybe when they restored the shoreline. That's not that's flag out crap and stuff. We got the K channel through and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, and that, but this it, isn't this this is a classical. I, I, I just I, love that. I I, was, uh, I, was, uh, so, well, I they got the got the iron ore, ore from the Wasabi Range in Minnesota, and so. So that's our, our, our little piece. That's our little piece of the Masabi. Masabi, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, John. <laughs> so now we're in Illinois, across the state line. This shot, aerials, what I say, about 2004, 2003, something like that. And this is long before they put in the, the bike trail along here. Um, and. Uh, it, it looks like they're what you have more open water now because this looked like it's yeah it's a pretty like a heavy marsh you said uh, but it's pretty much opened up a lot more today oh, you can see the it, right. you get, when when you, you, can, you can kind of see uh, almost the uh, old beach ridges at, uh, at Edgersville uh, oh. her, 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 kind of like where the trees have a little taller yeah and stuff like that that's where the uh, all the trees were on the higher ground, yeah, and these are sandy ridges. Now we got a, they got a drainage, we got a drainage problem at Wolf Lake, so, and uh, uh, I, I, I've been talking to the people in the forest today, but I don't know if they have any money. No, uh, they're doing some kind of the, the, this marsh, and, and it's, it, it, it's a lot well higher than it usually is, and uh, because of the Slag pole and the yeah. Nike site yeah. had blocks of this, this uh, one time. Uh, maybe, you no. Know? Uh, so we're talking like about four row the. Oh, I'm talking, talking about before the time of settlement. Before the time of settlement, too, you know? Yeah. So, some new channels would, 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 would uh, you know, uh, flood, flood and push through the, push through the, the sand ridges. And, and so, so that could have been one of the, that could have been one of the uh, outlets going to, uh, at one time, going to, to rock. Uh, uh, Lake Michigan, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and not, not, now the outlets are five degrees, you yeah. know, uh, the, 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 Grand, the Grand Calumet River, mm -hmm. you know, and then, uh, yeah, so, so those, those move, move with, uh, with, with, with the uh, weather, or, 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 I guess. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, 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 I think that, it, 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 I, I, I've, I've seen it, uh, like, old, old books, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, about the dunes, uh, dual for the dunes, uh, sacred, sacred sands. There's a book called Sacred Sands. Uh, it's about the dunes, and uh, uh, the book that we talk about that. We'll move over so you can see your screen. <laughs> so yeah, that, uh, that's uh, Cook County Forest Preserve District. Manages the Acres Woods and um, and the old long site for the Nike missile. Uh, I remember seeing the like, the Nike missiles from my house when I was a kid. Is that right? Uh, well, just uh, I lived in the water gardens. Okay. And I could go out to the beach and oh, go over there. You could see over there. Okay. So, uh, the file that's Wolf Lake, 2002, who was there? I was there. Were you there? Uh, Joanne was there. Yeah, I, was I guess there. I was there, yeah. And you were there. And they were yeah. searching for that uh, little, one, one little uh, plant that they made them the farm. Uh, no, the, this was, uh, oh, the no, this was a, um, the American uh, 20, a 24-hour period <laughs> where they would try to, uh, thank you. This is yeah. To record as many uh, plants and wildlife, oh, okay. and uh, they ended up at that time with about 2,000, 250, and I think since then that list has probably expanded to about 2,500. But um, but it's very diverse. Some of them are many of them are native, right? No, these were well, these were no, these were just all plants. They didn't yeah, necessarily they were there whether they were native or not. Uh, that was the 
first project was that? Diversity. Pardon? Who spearheaded that All, project? City of Chicago, I, I think was was it, and they had they had one in Southern Illinois in the previous year, 2001. So they were trying to outdo them, which they did. Um, and then three years after this, they had one in the uh, Dunes area. And then I think within the last year or so, they had a second one in the Dunes area. So did you say it was the UFC? Field um, Museum put these on. The what? Field Museum, City of oh, Chicago, field, field. Um, the uh, Water uh, Survey. Illinois. There was quite a few different groups that mm. sponsored these. But uh, yeah, the Field Museum in the city of Chicago. Speaking, speaking of speaking of the Dunes, well, it's, it's a national lecture now. Uh, in the National Park Service, I, I had heard that like uh, uh, the, the Dunes uh, uh, is one, one of the smallest national parks. It's a small national lecture, uh, and but it's in like. I, I think at least within the top five of all the national parks and their biodiversity, you know? Yeah. Uh, even though it's so small, so, yeah. so small. So some of that, some of that goes off on us too, you know? Indian Creek, which is um, uh, the center of, of great concern right now uh, because of the four wheel wheelers that have been going in there and stirring up. Uh, contaminated soils, and so a study by Illinois EPA has uh, discovered uh, some serious uh, problems, both uh, in the soil and in the air, and so uh, it's very possible that they could just uh, fence that off. It's, uh, this is the area that's closest to Avenue Wall, and it's privately owned by Donald Trump, who's the investor. And, um, who wants it? Donald Trout. Don Trout. Um, and he, he's one that purchased the uh, land from uh, the steel mill there. Republic? Re Republic Steel. He ended up buying up much of all that, that land. That was Republic uh, property then? Yeah. And it is right here, yeah. It's still the old Republic property. And so. And so he sold off all the land, uh, the manufacturing campus for Ford uh, Motor Company. Uh, that was that's what he owned. And he sold that off, uh, but he was left with a lot of land that is, is highly contaminated, and there's no one that's going to willing to buy that. And uh, so now um, uh, he has he's allowed the all this uh, four-wheelers to uh, enter his property and, and do all this damage. And so now it's become a problem. So it was all right when no, no one disturbed it. It's like the Maisel Channel. As long as you don't disturb them, then well, that maybe going to happen. Did, maybe Donald Trump did pull the wall there. So, but, um, so anyway, and that's going to be um, a main concern over uh, the next couple of years, I think. I just remember that in the creek. Who's getting involved in that? Do you know? I would assume it would be Illinois EPA uh, primarily, but it's the um, uh, city of Chicago owns a third of, of, of Indian Creek, uh, the portion that flows into uh, the kind of river. Yeah, and, and there's nothing blocking it from going into our drinking water in Lake Michigan. Right. So, uh, that's, so, so, so they should take fish. They, they, they should take a lot of heavy metals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lead, lead, and uh, lead, and um, I've got the report. <laughs> I read the report, but, and I can't remember here. But there's some bad stuff. And uh, so, can, can I mean, can this is the uh, third that the city of Chicago owns. This has been restored, and there is a plan for the restoration of the uh, area that's contaminated. And uh, no one is willing to buy the property in order to restore it. I mean, they, he can't give it away. So, um, 
So there's going to have to be a cleanup there, and then uh, somebody's going to have to take over ownership and, and get some money in, and, and to restore that portion, like they restored this portion. And it, it has a lot to do with fisheries, and it has a lot to do with, and in fact, one of the problems right now with, with, uh, with Lake Michigan, as high as it is, uh, that's really backing into Kaimet River. The Kaimet River is backing into Indian Creek, and Indian Creek is backing into Wolf Lake. And you don't want that. You don't want the stuff from Indian Creek uh, going into Wolf Lake. And if you go out there, the, you don't know which way the flow is going. Mm -hmm. From day to day, it changes a little bit. Um, I've read that's true of the Calumet River as a whole. All the, all the, what you speak, yeah, all that is true, mm -hmm. yeah. For the Grand Cal. I think I'm thinking of the little. Particularly the Grand Cal, but little Cal too. But because Lake Michigan affects them, affects all the There's a, a lot of them down over something like 130 or something. Uh, but I, I don't know. I don't think that. How, uh, Lake how, Michigan. It doesn't, I don't know if it does much good. It dictates good, what happens here. This is a high lake wetland, that's actually 20 acres, uh, not 40. I've got to correct this. Um, and um, we're probably, it may change hands uh, in the near future. Maybe some of the restoration work can begin there. That's our hope. And if you continue the uh, counterclockwise motion around Wolf Lake. This is uh, Powder Horn, Lake and Prairie. Hundred and seventy five acres. Um, what, what, what what's happening with the uh, uh, old trailer ports? Uh, mm -hmm. that, 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 they, they had that tip and then I talked to uh, Alderman Polk about it. <laughs> and he Oh, the trailer course. You mean the, that? The, the trailer, the trailer course between uh, between Powder and, and Wolf Lake. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Harbor Harbor Point Estates. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 they they were gonna they were gonna build build, build there and put a shopping center there and put you know, home, homes and stuff. And then they and then they, they, they ran out of trip. They didn't, but well, they had they, the depression. They, supposedly, they were. The depression is what happened there. There's no longer, there were plans to put a housing development there, but with the, uh, with the um, plummeting of, of property values a few years ago that they've lost all that money. It would be nice to make a green, uh, a green connection to, uh, from Wolf Wolf Lake to Powder Horn, uh, you know, that was... Uh, well, that's still, that, in it, fact, it, it, I think they have the money for that. Uh, and. Uh, and that's still in the works, and that's still in the, in the talking stage. And I, at first, I thought they were talking about the Avenue K, uh, about Lama Avenue K. But I think what they're talking about is along the railroad tracks um, east of our Harbor Point Estates. But uh, and then those talks are going on now, continue to go on. So I think we just have to wait and see on that. Can I make container? Um, my favorite spots, and um, if you're familiar with this, uh, it's now a brownfield of 11 half acres, but um, they had to remove the top 18 inches of, of along most of this 11 half acres uh, because it, it was once uh, uh, a company that uh, recycled. Uh, industrial, 55 gallon industrial drums. And uh, mm -hmm. during the uh, 60s and 70s, uh, early 70s, and of course what, the, what was going on was, was the large companies like the steel mills would have partially filled industrial drums. And uh, instead of having to pay to go to a specialized landfill for, for this, they would send them kind of containers to recycle them. Kind of containers would take the contents and pour them on the ground. And then, with uh, with the, the, uh, and then clean them with fairly toxic uh, uh, soap or whatever 
and use, and, and then they would dump that into the ground. So that 11 and a half acres ended up with quite a bit of uh, contaminants in it, and uh, lead and chromium and, and uh, other things. So they, they decided in, um, in, in, the, in the early 1960s, they had uh, uh, removal of of uh, uh, liquids from the, from the area, but they didn't go beyond the on the surface. Uh, that is between the railroad tracks, um, uh, along Boy Scout, Boy Scout Drive, yeah. Yeah. and the uh, western edge of it is, is on, it's in Illinois, but 90% uh, of it is in Indiana. But it's yeah. a bi-state. Boy, I thought they were done with that. Well, they they are done with that as far as removal. Uh, but what they're not finished with is the future use of it. Because what was discussed back in 2000, 2001, was to uh, restore it as a, a natural site, as a kind of an outdoor classroom for students in the area. Hmm. and. So the US EPA has spent $40,000 in, in, with native plants and, um, and some aquatic uh, So after plants. they remove the 18 inches off the top, uh, uh, I, I imagine a lot of threatened mites and stuff would have come into that, might come into that because it would lower the... Well, yeah, we, we were out cleaning it up. Yeah. Uh, at the time, it was... Uh, before they cleared out, it was mostly a lot of trees, a lot of uh, uh, cottonwoods back there. And so they just cleared just about everything. They left some trees around the pond that, that's on the site, but everything else was kind of cleared off. Okay. And then they they brought in the soil to the water replace table, the soil. The water table had been so high, 18 inches, so I probably made a, a lot. I, I haven't been back there lately. Yeah. I'm just mad. Phragmites is uh, about covers about 65 percent of it now, and uh, we're trying to figure out how to uh, reacquire some of the land because private owner, a couple of private owners came in and bought it, bought it probably sight unseen, and then once they discovered what they what they bought, which was a brownfield, uh, they uh, they couldn't figure out what to do with the land. So I assume. Uh, some of it might be uh, go back to Lake County as a tax delinquent, um, and uh, there's a, a three and a three and a half acre parcel that's also privately owned, and um, that may have to be required. This is all pretty close to the Loop Station, right? Um, this is um, yeah, it's the well, it's the two. Um, there's two railroad tracks that cross 136th uh, Street, and it's uh, it's the uh, land uh, between the two railroad tracks um, south of 136th. So and it, it's kind of south. a tri triangle, yeah. South. Yeah, I, I yeah, know it's somebody right along the 136th. I know one of the partners. I mean, I, I've met one of the partners uh, in the. the Loop Station, and he owned, they owned uh, several acres around. Around that area. They, yeah. But not. I just they, wondered. They don't own this part. They don't own any of that. And I think most of what they own is north of 136. I'm guessing. Okay. Uh, well, he. That's they, something that's adjacent to the station. I think just west of the station. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's what he owned. He, he, he said he had given some of that to the city. Yeah. Yeah, the city owned part of that. Yeah. But that's all north of 136. And but the city owns about an eight tenths of an acre in on the Kaimet container site. They own a and Nipskull owns maybe a, an eighth of an acre enough to put up their equipment. Mm -hmm. But uh, so there's multiple ownerships and there are neighbors to it and so uh, we discussed this at our research summit last November, and we're uh, we're starting discussions on it now, hopefully, and we're trying.
begin to fulfill our efforts to make it into a natural area. And this is uh, Wolf Lake Terminal. We were discussing which part of the state and, is responsible um, for This it. is a, what lies along the state line. And uh, it discharges, it actually has kind of a hose like, like a fire hose. And it discharges uh, groundwater into uh, the Illinois side of Wolf Lake. And it's petroleum. They don't clean, clean the, the water, they just pump it into Wolf Lake. Mm -hmm. And so we've been in court on that since uh, uh, 2013. And um, we've been trying to convince the state, item uh, to put a more strict per permit. And we've been unsuccessful in doing it. So, uh, and at one point, uh, the uh, Illinois EPA had threatened to sue the company, and then uh, Rauner was elected governor, and all of a sudden, Illinois EPA has backed off of that. But it was at a point where I thought we would get some resolution, and then uh, the administration changed, and uh, there's no way they're going to do anything. But um, but we're we're still trying to to, to make changes. So um, we might how be doing can, something in the fall. How does that cut oil? It depends on oil into into freshwater lakes. Well, it's um, if if it was a large enough contamination. I mean, U.S. EPA, Illinois EPA, and Item all went in and inspected it in um, April of 2014. And so there was all kinds of violations that were noted and posted. And, and I, Wolf Lake Terminals has responded partially in, in um, playing it up. But there are some things that they still have. Uh, challenges that they still haven't met. Did that potentially come under the, uh, the Waterways Act, that provision that's being is sort of up in the air right now because of... Uh, no, I think, I, think I think this really goes back to 1973, the Clean Air, Clean Water Act. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, I think it's a violation of the Clean Water Act. And, but it just, if it was a, a big company dumping a lot of stuff into Wolf Lake, you know, US EPA would jump in. And, but, and, and even though this flows into Lake Michigan and we drink it, uh, by the time it reaches Lake Michigan, it, it's probably pretty well uh, dispersed. But, um, what do they so, store there? So they store petroleum, but they also, uh, store about 30 different chemicals. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a defense plant, right? No, no, the defense plant is down here. Oh, it should be. This is Wolf Lake Terminals, and, and actually the defense plant in the 19, um, can't use, sold the property, part of their properties to Wolf Lake Terminals. Oh, oh. So, so, so the, 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 I, I, the, do they, do they have, have a, does it have anything to do with work? Do they do a business with it? Do they have anything to do with the defense plan? No. No? Uh, no. This so, is... Uh, uh, so, well, what, 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 okay, what's the difference between what, what they do and what the, the, well, I know BP does it on a big, much bigger scale, but it seems like a much bigger, bigger scale because so it's so huge, you know? But what, 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 what is that exactly? Uh, they just make it different types of... Uh, chemicals that they sell to other industries? Well, they, yeah, they, they, they bring them in by train, mostly. They offload them, and then I assume that industry in the area are their clients, customers. Yeah. customers. What, what do they do with this defense site? 
They, that was... Uh, I've, they, I've, I've asked somebody that worked there and they said, I can't, I can't, I can't talk about it. No, <laughs> uh, they can talk about it. They, they built this uh, right after World War II, probably in the early 30s, to, or maybe late 40s, uh, uh, to store up materials that they ran short of dur during World War II. And so they did, the idea was they didn't want to go into another war and, and not have enough material. And so they started storing all of these, these really important materials. Well, I don't know today if, if those materials are in short supply, but for a long time they did, and they did, some of the materials were radioactive. And, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> And so they were. Uh, Why am I laughing? They they were stored, uh, and uh, but the, the, I think they were stored. That, was, that the, the, was that the stuff on Stackville? <laughs> no, they. Oh. But they. Uh, but some of the store, some of what they stored was right on right on the ground, and so when I was talking to them in 2004, they had some they had a lead problem, so. That is what they're treating. Uh, they're treating uh, uh, runoff, uh, and they're treating it before they release it into a Wolf Lake. Wolf Lake Terminals doesn't treat theirs, and so they theirs goes directly into into Wolf Lake. So I think the the, the, the fence, the depot there, uh, is following. There's, there's not a problem with what they're doing, but there's a problem with what Wolf Lake Terminals is doing. So that's the difference. And of course, there's two different missions. So I had heard that we might have some of the uh, work from where they, you know, the, 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 the football stadium at, at the University of Chicago. Yeah, the yeah. I had heard that we had some of the stuff was dumped over there. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard that. Well, there's yeah, a story about some I'm stuff being, I don't know if it's true, being so just unofficially dumped in the Roby area, I think. Yeah. That is because, according to the story, is that after they did all this, dumped it into Wolf Lake and then dumped it into Lake Michigan, they went before the Hammond City Council and told them what they had done because they thought they had. You know, they were obligated to do that. But, I mean, it's through it's, it's George Lake, and that is, that, that cars used to go there to yeah. the time college. Yeah. Uh, but they no longer. Oh, yeah, I've been, been on that bike path. I've been, 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 been on that bike path. I was just yeah. going to the other bike path and went out. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I don't know. I just, this is just kind of a quick tour. Uh, this is just information uh, about Ollie, the organization, and most of you know that. And these goals were established in 2003, and they remain unchanged over the years. And these are some of the achievements. The $2.9 million kinetic container, that was, I mean, that US EPA will tell you today it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Ali, uh, because we really pushed for that. Uh, shoreline restoration, that was actually, that was why OLLI was formed, because the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers needed a bi-state organization uh, to be the lead organization on that project. Well, there was no bi-state organizations around here. So in 1999, uh, we were formed uh, to be the lead organization in the at that time, which was, uh, was an $8.9 million project, uh, $2 million was to go for the Illinois side of Wolf Lake. And there was no agreement ever reached between Illinois DNR and uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. So that $2 million was never spent. That went back. So anyway, the Research Summit, uh, most of you are familiar with that. Um, that, was, that, that happened last November. The kind that we visited forum will be entering our fourth year uh, this fall. That's a monthly forum, um, September through May. Uh, 
the first Tuesday of every month, we have a, a speaker. And um, a lot of the past um, meetings are on video on our website. And all of them were produced by Kevin and Joanne. You have the Michael Colby one on the gel that will play up there? No, he did not want that to be videotaped. Did you ever talk about it? Did I know him? Did you mention it? Yeah, yeah. In fact, there was, it was funny. There was several people there at the meeting that had been his students. And I was surprised. Yeah, yeah. But I did mention to him. And, um, and I can't remember what his response was. Because there was discussions of of uh, others that had been his students. Uh, but he grew up, it was interesting, he grew up along, around Barry Lake, <coughs> didn't he, in, in, in that area, okay. yeah, of White. Yeah. Now, I, I didn't know that before the, before his talk. And this is kind of what we do during the year, this is this year's, and you can see how busy May was. And I'm glad it's over with. May and January are just kind of killing. And then we have uh, these projects that are we're working on, and the and the big ones are is uh, Calumet Container, uh, Indian Creek, High Lake Wetlands. I combine those, and uh, and then Wolf Lake Terminals. Those are the three that are really. The, the, the next one will be, um, and it just takes, uh, just haven't had the time to do it, uh, is the bi-state management plan. And, and that is really important. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I just, I've received some help on it, some advice, and good advice, and so I'm pursuing that, but it just takes, just takes time. And um, so we did concentrate this year on, on uh, sustaining the organization. And I've mentioned that I've been to the um, Hammond, Munster, and Lansing uh, Rotary Clubs. And we're going to go out to other groups. Just to, we're trying to get the word out of what Ollie is doing with the Wolf Lake Watershed in hopes that we might get uh, develop a community of investors. And so we want these groups, if they, if they feel so inclined to commit a five-year um, um, plan of donations, because uh, what you receive in donations uh, this year if, if, you're, if you can't count on it coming next year and the year after that, year after that, year after that, then you can't really make good plans. And so um, we're reaching out and maybe by the end of the year we'll figure out if, it, if it's been worth it. But, um, so that's what's been keeping us busy. And Rod Sellers strikes again. This is a photograph we use on our um, um, uh, um, plan, vision plan for Wolf Lake, and, uh, which was printed in 2001. So, uh, but anyway, I've always liked that, that photo. That's great. So, I think I can just hit the escape and get that getting out of there. Excuse me. No, it doesn't. Well, maybe it does. Yeah. Thank you, Michael.